What is going on, good people of YouTube? I'm Jay Slay. Thank you so much for joining me. And wherever you are, I hope you're having a great day. Today we're playing some Madden 21, but before we get into it, if you enjoy the content, leave a like rating. And if you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe button and turn the notification bell on to stay updated with all of my uploads. Just want to give a quick shout out to each and every one of you. The support on the channel has been absolutely overwhelming and awesome. And I just want to say I appreciate each and every one of you guys stopping by. Thank you, and I love you all. If you missed our previous video, I'll leave a link in the description of this video for you to go check it out. But in it, I talk a little bit about Series 3 and what I'm doing to prepare. So for today's video, we've got episode number 3 of rebuilding this Atlanta Falcons roster. We are currently in year 3, and we've made a lot of moves so far. We have put, in my opinion, this team... We've put them in a position for long-term success. Now, if you missed the first two episodes, I'm going to leave a card in the top right-hand corner for the second episode, and then I'll leave a playlist link in the description of this video. Go check it out. If nothing else, it makes chronological sense. You can see all the moves, all the decisions, where we finished, how we turned out in each year, and what has kind of led up to year number three here. So, we're fresh off a playoff berth. Fortunately, we did not make it to the Super Bowl. However, I feel like we've got a good shot this year to go even farther in the playoffs. And if not, maybe take home that Super Bowl victory. Now, let's go ahead. Let's jump right into the team so you guys can see who we've got on offense, who we've got on defense. And let's just kind of go through it here. So, Justin Fields, he's going to be our starting quarterback. Matt Ryan is gone. Yes, we traded Matt Ryan in the offseason. Probably could have gotten more. We did get a seventh round pick for him with his contract. I was, I feel like I was lucky enough to get that. So Justin Fields, this is his first year. He does have superstar. That's awesome. We're going to look for him to carry the team throughout this season and hopefully carry us into the playoffs. Chubba Hubbard, we need a lot more from this dude, man. This dude averaged about negative 3.75246 yards per carry last year. I don't know how he's got superstar. We should be thanking our lucky stars that he does, but he does have superstar development. Hopefully, we're going to get some better production from him. That all starts with the offensive line, right? You know, we need the offensive line to continue to kind of come together. Jake Matthews still sitting at a 79 overall. We're going to need to, most likely this offseason, maybe address this offensive line, maybe look to kind of upgrade as Jake Matthews is aging. He's getting a little bit older. Trey Smith is a solid left guard. I just like to get him to that star or even superstar development. That would be phenomenal if we can get that. Matt Hennessy's continuing to develop, right? We may need to look to replace him uh, at the center position. We'll kind of see there. Chris Lindstrom still kind of progressing. He's still young. He's got star right now. Caleb McGarry, this could be the last year with the team. We did not pick up his fifth-year option, so if he can step up and show something, maybe get that star development, he might end up being one that we look to bring back down the road. Dominic Darby, our new tight end. We could not afford to keep Hayden Hurst. Dude ended up getting superstar X-Factor. And in the final year, had a good season for us, but we went ahead and drafted his replacement. Hopefully this guy is going to give us the kind of production that Hayden Hurst gave us, or, you know, at least a fraction of it, right? Maybe more than a fraction. Calvin really is going to take over as the number one wide receiver. Julio is gone. It uh, saddens me a lot. It really does. But we needed Ridley to make that step. We needed to we needed to get Jalen Waddle on the field. I mean, this dude was our second round pick. As you can see, he's got superstar X factor. We needed to get him on the field. We've, we, we, Julio was getting up in age. We've got some young receivers to build around. As you can see, Russell Gage here has superstar development. So he was expendable. One of the best receivers to ever play the game. You don't want to have to get rid of him, but I feel like it did make our team better, right? So we're looking pretty solid at the receiver position, at the skill positions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the defense. This defense I am super happy with, and I cannot wait to see what they do this year. I believe we were sixth in points allowed uh, in year number two. Let's look to build off of that, man. Maybe we can get to that top three, right? Let's go ahead. You know, let's just start with the defensive line, probably the weakest position that we have right now. Joseph Osai is our right end. We've got, uh, I believe this is Keelan Dent, if I'm not mistaken, is his name. This is uh, our first round draft pick. We actually drafted him as a left outside linebacker. He's going to slide down, though, as 6'5", 264. He's going to slide down and play left in. He's a 78 overall as a rookie. You can't ask for much better than that, right? Grady Jarrett holding down uh, the middle of the defense. Marlon Davidson playing right next to him. I want to see Marlon Davidson and Joseph Osai take the 
take this next step, right? Let's go ahead and look at the secondary. Caleb Farley has superstar development. That is very solid. Cornerback out of Virginia Tech. He was one of the first round picks that we took in the first episode at the end of year one. 82 overall, pretty good. Hopefully he can get up to about maybe an 85, 86 overall at the conclusion of this season. You'd like to see A.J. Terrell or Kendall Sheffield get that star or better development. That would be solid. It would take our secondary to the next level in my opinion. Kendall Sheffield's going to play the slot. AJ's going to play on the outside at CB number two. Keanu Neal, strong safety, right? He's going to be that hard-hitting safety, playing down in the box, helping out and run support. He can cover a little bit too. He can cover the tight end some. Not necessarily your, you know, stay back in coverage type of safety, uh, but he does have superstar development, which is really good. And Paris Ford, um, one of our picks from the first year uh, in the draft. He is uh, our starting free safety. Star uh, development right now. 75 overall. Hopefully he can pair with Keanu Neal to make a good safety tandem. The position I'm most excited about, man, look at this group right here. Foyer Luakon, Deion Jones, Michael Walker. Two of which, Deion Jones and Michael Walker, have superstar development. I cannot wait to see this group, man. I cannot wait to see what they do at the end of, at the, end of the year. One of the fastest linebacking cores in the NFL. Luakon and Deion Jones have over 90 speed. I believe Michael Walker is pretty close to that. We'll take a look and see what he's at right now. He is at 84 speed, so he's nowhere near 90 speed. But when you take into account what this group looks like and what they can do together as a unit, man, I'm excited about this group. I cannot wait. So that's the defense, right? Special teams, Sterling Hoffrichter, Elliot Fry. Elliot Fry, while we actually played him last year, he did slip down into the kicker rankings, right? Uh, year one, if you missed it, he was on our practice squad and ended up being in the top three of the best kicker awards. Last year, I believe he was in the top seven or eight. I don't know, man. I guess we uh, got him out on the field and the game decided that you know, he just wasn't, wasn't holding up like he did in year one. So anyway, we're not going to hopefully have to worry about these guys too much. Here's our specialist, as you can see what we're working with. And then here's our practice squad, guys. I think we've got 47 wide receivers on the practice squad. I, I'm just, I'm not even paying attention to this practice squad, right? Yep, you can see a million wide receivers. So if any of our wide receivers go down, we can call someone up. Okay, so the way this is going to work, I don't want this to be an hour-long video like the last episode was. I'd like to target between 30 and 45 minutes at the most. So we're not going to show the scouting. We're not even going to know these players anyway, right? So we're not going to show me scouting. We're going to take a look at the stats after week eight. So at the halfway point of the season. And then we're going to take a look at the stats, obviously, at the end. So last episode, we looked at them four separate times. We're going to cut that down to two this time. We are going to simulate, though, about three to four weeks at a time and just kind of see where we are. If we get any developed but trait upgrade opportunities we are going to hop in there and see if we can go ahead and get that so without further ado i'll catch you after week four when we play the baltimore ravens okay so four games in we are currently two and two not too bad considering everybody else in the nfc south with the exception of the buccaneers who are one and three are also two and two so right there in it so far i've actually decided against not showing the stats we're gonna go ahead and show the stats after every four weeks just to kind of take a look at it and see where we are 26 in offense that's not very good 22nd in defense so we're kind of right at the tail you know lower third haven't scored that many points almost worse than the league and we've only allowed uh, 81 points, which is 12th best in the league, so not too bad. Let's take a look and see what the stats are, are looking like here. Offensively, I'm not expecting too much here. So Justin Fields has five touchdowns with three interceptions so far. Remember this point in year number two, Matt Ryan had eight touchdowns with no picks and a little over 1,000 yards, so Fields is going to have to step it up, man. Hopefully, I mean, he's only a 76, right? So he's going to improve as we go. Chubba Hubbard is already having a better season right off the bat than he did last year yeah that yards per carry is still low but if you remember last season it was like 2.9 through the first like eight or nine games it was it was crazy and I think it only ended up being like right at three right so he looks like he's stepping up a little bit Calvin Ridley he's frustrated with the game plan right now we're gonna put him in the slot for this next game hopefully him being in the slot will get him more targets you know, the way the CPU does it, you tend to get more targets when you're in the slot. So we're going to go ahead and do that for him. Dominic Darby, pretty solid season so far. You know, the average per game is not there, but obviously nobody's average per game is there because we're not really moving the ball that well, but he does have two touchdowns already. Jalen Waddle, his first real year getting on the field, 19 catches, 180 yards so far. And then Russell Gage, 
12 for 171. So, uh, you know, our our four main weapons are looking okay so far. We're going to need them to step up. Deion Jones already has 41 tackles on the season, though. Keanu Neal coming in with 32. Foye Aluakon with 24. Sacks. It looks like we've got some pressure on the quarterbacks so, so far. So that's good to see. Joseph Osai with three and a half sacks. Deion Jones with three sacks and two picks already. Man, he's looking like he could be a... He's looking like he could be a defensive player of the year candidate. That would be pretty solid, especially if he can end up getting Superstar X Factor. Keelan Dent, our first round draft pick, coming in with 13 tackles and three sacks so far. So that's pretty solid. Grady Jarrett down there with a half a sack, too. Interceptions, you got Deion Jones with two. Kendall Sheffield and Caleb Farley coming in with one as well. Okay, so stat-wise, we need to improve offensively, obviously, right? That's got to step up. Defensively, we look like we're okay. Hopefully, we can take that next step as the season goes on. Um, here's Calvin Ridley. He's frustrated with the game plan. Hopefully we can get him. He's probably going to want five targets or 100 yards. We're, we're going to get him involved. Hopefully we can get his morale boosted up. And get him five touches or 100 yards. So hopefully we can do that. Hopefully that's not going to affect him long term. And uh, we're going to upgrade a couple players here. So far, um, Justin Fields has got an upgrade. Michael Walker, Dominic Darby. Caleb McGarry, just to kind of name a few, and it looks like we've got some impact players that have upgrades right here as well, which is really good to see. Jalen Waddle, we're going to go ahead and upgrade his deep threat. When I upgraded our tight end, Dominic Darby, I upgraded his vertical a trait. He went up plus four deep route running, which is, I don't know if I've ever seen that before. That was, that's incredible. Good upgrades right there. Solid stuff. Jalen goes to a 78 overall. Joseph Osai coming in with an upgrade. That's good as well. We're going to upgrade his speed rusher trait. Go ahead and get his scheme fit upgrade there. Plus three awareness is always good. And then Paris Ford, finally, going to have an upgrade for him. Let's go ahead and upgrade his zone trait. He's going to go up to a 76 overall. So good upgrades there. Plus one on his zone. That's always a good thing to see for sure. And where are we at here? So we are going to be at home against the Arizona Cardinals. We don't have any development trait upgrades. We haven't had any so far. If we do have that, we are definitely going to jump in, and you will see that. But right now, I think we're going to go ahead and simulate the next four weeks. And uh, we'll see you, let's see, after week nine when we have to go on the road to face the Cleveland Browns. Okay, not a good quarter of the season to say the least. We went one and three. Now, I think the schedule makers were doing some hard drugs when they made the schedule. They gave us four away games in a row. The first away game going into the bye week. And then we had to go on the road against the Browns, the Buccaneers which we haven't played yet, and then the Chargers. What in the world? What in the world? Hey, throw us a bone. Throw us a bone, schedule makers. Four away games in a row? That's ridiculous. Now, we do have, as you can see, three home games coming up. So we just we need to win these next two games. Going into that Week 12 matchup at home against the Seahawks, we have got to come away with a win. Division win, nonetheless, against the division-leading Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You can see they're 5-3. and three. We're, we're, we're in it, right? I mean, we're only two games back. Panthers, Saints, both 4-4, four and four, right? So, we're not out of this by far, but we need to get this. We need to get a win, right? Stop the losing streak. Yep, Grady, we need to stop it, brother. What you got? What you got for me? I'm calling players only meeting. What position group do you think needs addressing? Uh, I think we probably need to address the offense, to be honest with you. We're going to take a look at the stats here. Judging from the scores, I don't think our offense is putting up the kind of points that we need to and the kind of yardage that we need to. But um, let's go ahead and we'll coach up your defensive lineman, Grady. You're going to be able to speak to the defensive lineman a lot better than you would be to maybe the uh, secondary group. So we're going to go ahead and get you to speak to the D-line, right? Plus 10 morale boost for all defensive linemen. That's good. Get three sacks against the Buccaneers. We'll take a look at the stats here in a second. We'll see how we've been doing. Uh, we're going to see what, uh, what, what players that we have to upgrade first. And uh, we've gotten a couple of upgrades so far from Justin Fields. Uh, Jalen Waddle's gotten an upgrade. Uh, a few others, obviously, have gotten upgrades. Keanu Neal, uh, Michael Walker, uh, Keelan Dent, our first-round draft pick, has gotten an upgrade. Uh, Caleb Farley, so good stuff there. Michael Walker, as you can see, has another upgrade here, so that's good stuff. Let's go ahead and upgrade his run-stopper trait. This is the second time he's already gotten an upgrade in this episode, so that's good. You can see his superstar development trait is coming through. Plus two block shedding. It's always good there. We're going to go ahead and let the CPU just take care of the rest of these three. These three jabrones that are playing backup positions and special teams. How's Big Cat Bryant doing? We're going to take a look at Big Cat Bryant here in a second. But let's go ahead and look at the stats. We'll see if Big Cat Bryant's gotten on the old stat. 
Got on the old stat tracker. So let's come down. And, uh, yep, 2,500 yards. That is good for 29th in the NFL. It's not good. It's not good at all. Defensively, we are playing really well. Only giving up a little over 2,700 yards. Still not scoring any points. That's that's terrible. You can see our receiving yardage leader is at 469, which is not very good. We've only given up 174 points, which is not too bad. Let's take a look at these passing stats. Justin Fields, the touchdown interception rating is not terrible. 2-1. to one. You'd like to see him have a little bit more yardage, though. He's only throwing for 1,800 yards. Rushing, Chubba Hubbard is looking a lot better. He's up to 3.8 yards per carry. We're not scoring any touchdowns, though, as you can see. He's only got two touchdowns. Kadri Allison has two, and Ido Smith has one. Terrible yards per carry across the board, though, for just about everybody. Receiving stats, you saw Calvin Ridley's leading the team, but it's not good. One touchdown, four from Russell Gage. Jalen Waddles having a decent year so far. You'd like to see him improve. Dominic Darby at the tight end position at only a 73 overall is playing pretty solidly. So once again, our four playmakers right there. You'd like to see this average yards per game improve, but I feel like that could be a product of us having a 76 overall quarterback, even though he is a superstar. He's going to have to develop, right? He's going to have to develop. He has gotten some development points so far, so that's good. Deion Jones building on his possible defensive player of the year if we can Get some get rolling with some wins here. 66 tackles, three sacks, three interceptions. Solid year so far for him. Keanu Neal with 51 tackles. Kendall Sheffield at 49. Caleb Farley at 48. We've got three corners making a lot of tackles. Foyer down there at 45. Quarterback sacks. Keelan Dent leading the team with five and a half. You like to see that from our rookie first round pick. Joseph Osai did nothing in the last quarter. That is not good. And uh, Grady Jarrett coming in with two. Marlon Davidson getting on the board with his first sack. Big Cat Bryant, where you at, brother? 13 tackles. I'm telling you, the Cat, Andres Galarraga's younger son, youngest son, he's going to get up to a 70 overall before this rebuild is over. I can promise you that. You guys know that's a storyline that we're watching. 13 tackles coming out of the right end, who's, I think, like third on the depth chart. Maybe he's second on the depth chart. I don't know, but... That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I mean, you wonder why he's getting so much playtime, but not too many interceptions to speak of. I believe it looks like we had two over the next quarter of the season, so two in four games. Keanu Neal had one, and then De Deion Jones had another one. Okay, well, we got to pick it up, man. We've had our bye week. We've rested. Grady Jarrett's talking up the defensive line. Our schedule looks like it's getting a little bit better as we've got some home games coming up, but we got to win these two away games, man. There's just no question about it. We've got to come through with a W here if we want to put ourselves into the. I uh, have the opportunity to make the playoffs. We don't want to. We don't want to. We don't want to win. Make the playoffs the year prior, and now we've got all this talent right coming together. We've got some cap room. We want to continue to build on it, right? So, needless to say, it looks like we're going to go ahead and sim through week 13. So I'll catch you guys after we have our home game. Man, were we ever close to a 4-0 and quarter. We ended up going 3-1. and We put ourselves in a lot better position, though, to make the playoffs in a very tight NFC South. As you can see, the standings, Saints are at 7-5. and This is a huge game coming up with them at home. We're 6-6. Six and six. The Bucks are 6-6. Six and six. The Panthers are 6-6. Six and six. What a tight race. Let's go ahead and go to the schedule. I haven't showed this just yet, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at it right now. Just so you can kind of see how the schedule has shaken out. We started off 2-2. Two and two. There's that three-game losing streak. Look at all those ats in a row. It's just completely ridiculous. I hope they drug-tested the league who made the schedule. It's just un uncalled for. Uncalled for is what it is. We ended up rolling off three wins in a row, though. Big win against the Bucks. 17 to nothing against the Rams. Defense is playing out of their minds, it appears. Seahawks are... Took the loss against us. We won 21-14. to And we couldn't beat the football team. Couldn't beat the team without a mascot. Lost 28-14. But we got big games coming up here, right? Four games to close out the season. Home against the Saints. At the Bengals. Home versus the Steelers. At the Vikings. We got, I mean, we need to go 4 0. We go 4 0, we go 10 and 6. That's pretty much going to guarantee us going into the playoffs. This is going to be tough, though. This is going to be a tough road. Let's go ahead before it gets too late here. I don't want to wait and put this all the way off until the end of the season. We're going to come in here, see if we can re sign some of these players. So Grady Jarrett's 29, but he's at a 91 overall, and he's still at superstar development. He's holding down the middle of our defense. Let's see what he wants. It's going to be very big. So two years. Big signing bonus there. 
I mean, that's not terrible, right? A, a two-year deal for a 29-year-old D-tackle? Let's go ahead and offer him this and see what he does. That's a good offer. I'm glad we got the dude on perfect. We got Grady Jarrett back for another two years. This guy right here was the bane of my existence trying to re-sign him in the offseason last episode. Foye Aluakon. He just would not take anything that we wanted to give him. We ended up franchise tagging him. And uh, it looks like so. He wants a four-year, $7.5 million deal. We've got a lot of cap room to work with at this point, which is really good. That helped a lot. Getting rid of Matt Ryan's salary, getting rid of Julio Jones' salary. We may actually end up, we haven't been able to the first two off-seasons been able to sign any free agents. We may actually be able to sign a free agent or two to come and help our offense out is what it looks like we're going to need. Looking at the draft class this year and based off of what we need, there's some gems that we could possibly get in the later rounds, but... The talent in the first couple of rounds does not look very good. Maybe we look to ship a pick or two for an already high-profile player on another team. We'll look to see what we do there. We're going to go ahead and make this offer for Foyer, see what he does. That's the offer. Good. Good deal. So our linebacking core is set right now with Dion, Foyer, and Michael Walker. Probably want to look to sign Kendall Sheffield. We may look to let Caleb McGarry walk. He's 27 years old, still hasn't developed. He's a 73 overall. Probably not somebody that we want to look to bring back. But Kendall Sheffield, let's see what he wants. Oh, most definitely, we'll bring you back. As a slot cornerback, yeah, for sure. Thanks. This is going incredible. Literally everybody, it seems like, over the last couple episodes I've tried to re-sign, have just been like, yeah, I'm going to test free agency. I mean, we got 48 overalls that are like, yeah, I'm going to test free agency. I'm like, all right, bro, let's see how that works for you. Yeah, good, good job. Good, good luck just sitting in free agency for the rest of the existence of time. Ito Smith... Probably not. TJ Green, Jordan Miller, Ryan Neal. I mean, maybe we bring these guys, some of these guys back as far as depth for, for depth purposes. This dude's at 92 speed at 23 overall. What's he want? Yeah, we'll go ahead and bring him back. I mean, he's probably not going to develop. But by the way, Big Cat Bryant, Big Cat's up to a 67 overall. I'm telling you, the dude is going to be at a 70 overall before this rebuild is over. I can promise you that. We may look to move on from old Elliot Fry right here. Dude's got 63 kick accuracy. I think I could get out on the field and kick a little bit better than he could. And I didn't kick field goals when I used to play. Chris Slayton, my boy, great last name. And uh, Kurt Benkert, not very good. All right, we'll 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 just kind of hold Pat there. Got some, got some players re-signed. That's really good. All right, so we need to upgrade some players here. And then we'll take a look at the stats. See if Big Cat Bryant has about 400 tackles now. Probably not. I hate it when I do that. When I upgrade, I go for the nice color purple, right? It stands out. You go for that upgrade, and then their overall doesn't change. But he does get some good upgrades there. So Keelan Dent, this is his third upgrade of the episode so far. Really good stuff there. This guy is up to an 80 overall now. Actually, this might just be his second. But this guy is up to an 80 overall now as our first-round pick. That's good. Hopefully, he's going to get that development trait upgrade in the offseason. We have not had any opportunities for development trait upgrades in this episode so far. It's a little frustrating, but the way our offense has been playing, I mean, I can definitely understand why we haven't. Nick Campbell, this is his second upgrade so far. Plus one speed. You like to see that. So at 88 speed as a backup middle linebacker, that's pretty good. And we'll go ahead and upgrade Jalen Hawkins. I like Jalen Hawkins in, in real life. I hope that he ends up getting some more playing time. And uh, hopefully his concussion issue is is getting better. But I hope he gets hopefully he gets some more playing time. I'd like to see what he can do, you know, for us as a squad. But uh, all right, everything's cool there. Let's come over, take a look at the look at the stats, see if we improved at all offensively. We did, albeit slightly. We're still 26 in the NFL. We've got about 4,000 yards. First in the NFL in defensive yards. We have gotten better. Every single time we've looked at this, every quarter we've looked at this, we've gotten better. We're not scoring any points. We have the best overall defensive yardage allowed. We've got the second best overall defense in points allowed. Our defense is carrying us. I could not be happier. That's the side of the ball that I was really focusing on upgrading. So in that last quarter of the season, Justin Fields played really well. He did not throw any picks through five touchdowns, and he's almost up to 3,000 yards now. So a lot better. He's actually upped his yards per game average by about 18, so that's good as well. Chubba Hubbard's yards per carry average came down some. He's only sitting at 681 yards. I don't know what we need to do to get this guy... Not just more involved, but just more productive. I mean, he, he's only in his second year, right? We're going to let him continue to develop. Maybe we'll have to take a running back, right? Maybe maybe we can find a running back down the line. I don't know. We'll have to see, man. I'd like to see more produ production out of him, though. Calvin Ridley, 
he's up to now where he's uh, getting close to uh, or he's actually averaging more yards per game to get him over a thousand so that'd be nice still only three touchdowns Russell Gage leading the team with five touchdowns but he's only got 541 receiving yards we are just not moving the ball on offense like we need to especially well really through the ground and through the air it's just kind of been it's just kind of been a blah season offensively so far. Jalen Waddle, Dominic Darby having a pretty good season right now at the tight end position. You do like to see that. Let's come over defensively. Deion Jones, is he still playing at Defensive Player of the Year caliber? He's got 95 tackles, 3 sacks, and 3 picks. That's pretty solid. No more sacks or picks over the last 4 games, but still solid numbers there. I mean, he's almost leading anybody else on the team in tackles by almost 30. Caleb Farley, this dude's a stud. This dude, he's gotten 3 upgrades already. Superstar development. He's one more upgrade away from, I believe, getting another ability. Dude's a stud. Only got two picks so far, but he's progressing very nicely. Kendall Sheffield, Foya Aluakon coming in. You'd like to see some more stuff from Aluakon, right? I think he had about three or four sacks last season and two picks. Not really making any kind of impactful plays as far as that goes. But Keelan Dent with eight and a half sacks going into the final quarter of the season. You'd like to see him get over that 10 mark, that's for sure. Joseph Osai got a couple, so that's good. J Grady Jarrett got a couple more. And then we've got Marlon Davidson still with one. Big Cat, where are you at, brother? He only got one tackle in the last four games. Well, stuff happens. Big Cat's going to get there, though. I can promise you that. All right. Picks. Uh, Caleb Farley, I believe, got two over the last quarter of the season. That's good to see. And that was our only two picks. Okay. All right. So we've got... Four big games coming up here. You definitely think we got to at least go 3-1 and one to have a shot. Trying to make the playoffs at 8-8, eight and eight, it's probably not going to happen. If we go 3-1, and one, we've got a decent chance. If we go 4-0, oh, we've got a pretty good chance. So, after this Week 17 game against the Vikings, that's when you'll see me back. And hopefully, we'll be talking about a playoff game. Okay, so the frustrations of making videos. It's kind of reared its head a little bit. Recorded everything. Audio-wise, was just fine. The gameplay-wise, showing the, the last quarter of the season and what we did, just decided to pixelate out. So I couldn't use it. You wouldn't want to watch it. It was going to give me a seizure if I kept looking at it. So I've already seen this part. I've already seen all the stats. I've already seen all the awards. So my reaction, I've already seen them. So it's not going to be, you know, the genuine, real, first-time reactions. But as you can see, we went 0-4 over the last quarter of the season. To take us to 6-10, and 10, we did not make the playoffs. You can see the Bengals and the Giants are playing in the Super Bowl. Saints won the division at 10-6, at six, but obviously they did not make the Super Bowl. And um, we just need to play better on offense. We need to be more consistent. We'll take a look at the stats here, and we'll show you exactly what, kind of exactly what our demise was. So offensively, 29th in the NFL. We slipped to 8th. In the NFL in yardage allowed. Remember, we were first going into that last quarter of the season. 29th in points. We're just not putting up the kind of points we need to. You hope that Justin Fields' development is going to take us to that next level. You'll see in the stats here, he actually had a decent final quarter of the season, throwing for a lot more touchdown passes. But as you can see, we were 8th in, in defense and 8th and in points allowed too. So defensively, we've got a lot to build off of. Let's take a look at the stats here though. Justin Fields, almost 4,000 yards. 31 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. You can see over the last quarter of the season, I think he threw for about 14 touchdowns. He did throw five picks, but it looks like he was performing a little bit better, right? So that's good to see. Coming rushing, Chubba Hubbard, we have got to get some better performance from him. 248 carries, 879 yards, 3.5 yards per carry, three touchdowns. It's just not going to cut it. I mean, this dude's a superstar. He's just not getting the job done, man, and it's quite unfortunate. Let's go over to the receiving stats. Now, our top four weapons at the receiver position and tight end, respectively, everyone had at least 750 yards, but the touchdowns weren't exactly there. Nobody had 1,000 yards, and the most catches was Jalen Waddle with 75. So, hopefully, Justin Fields' development is going to improve this group as we go forward in the next coming years, but we got to do something on offense, that's for sure. Deion Jones, 127 tackles, three and a half sacks, three interceptions, solid all-around season for the middle linebacker, one of the best in the game. Keanu Neal, 100 tackles, two interceptions. Foyer had about 35 to 38 tackles over the course of the last quarter of the season. Dude balled out, had one sack as well. Come over, he also led the team in forced fumbles with two, so... 
pretty solid overall season for Foye Luakon. Sacks. So Keelan Dent ended up with nine and a half sacks. Joseph Osai had eight. So not too bad from our left and right end. Grady Jarrett had four. Deion Jones, once again, I've already said this, but three and a half. Marlon Davidson with one and a half. And then Foye Luakon with one and Paris Ford. Big Cat Bryant, I know you guys are all waiting with bated breath to see this. 16 tackles, no sacks. He's a 68 overall, though. Maybe maybe 67. Dude's going to get to a 70, I promise you that. Interceptions, Caleb Farley. Dude, this dude's going to be a stud. He is progressing very, very well. He had 85 tackles. He did have two interceptions. I believe both of those came over the final quarter of the season. Solid stuff from him there. You want to see those interception numbers come up, but he's up to like an 84 overall right now. Dude, is, is he's going to that next level. He's one upgrade away from getting to an 85, which will get him another ability. Solid stuff from Caleb Farley there. Paris Ford, Kendall Sheffield with one interception apiece. So there's the stats. Let's come over to the awards. See if any Falcons won any rewards. So Deshaun Watson won MVP, as you can see there. Ryan Tannehill came in second. Trey Lance on an 8-8 eight eight Jets team came in third. How about that? No Falcons there. Coach of the year, Cliff Kingsbury for the Cardinals. All right, NFC. Offensive player of the year was Russell Wilson. I doubt we're going to have any Falcons. Yeah, we don't. Defensive player of the year, Deion Jones down there at five. So pretty solid. Dante Fowler back with the Rams playing next to Aaron Donald. Gets sixth in defensive player of the year. They were only four and 12, so that's not very good. But yeah, we just couldn't afford it. Hey, Keelan Dent at 10 there. Okay. We just couldn't afford him. Uh, we could not afford Dante Fowler. He did end up getting superstar development too, which is kind of disappointing. But things happen. Matt Cheeks, not playing like butt cheeks, that's for sure. 10 and 6. Giants, who are in the Super Bowl. He wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. I don't know what position he plays. And uh, Dominic Darby, tight end there at 4. So it's good stuff there. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Keelan Dent, awesome. Maybe this is going to end up being at least a star or superstar development upgrade trait for Keelan Dent. You like to see that, especially him winning Defensive Rookie of the Year is going to help in that. That's for sure. Aaron Rodgers, best quarterback. Zeke's the best running back. Best wide receiver, Andy Isabella on the Bears. Wow. He must not have Nick Foles or Mitch Trubisky throwing to him. David Bakhtiari wins best O-line. Best D-line is Dante Fowler Jr. Keelan Dent coming in at second. So Dante Fowler Jr. is continuing to be the thorn in our side even on other teams. Best linebacker, Deion Jones, seventh. So he finishes fifth. In Defensive Player of the Year and 7th. Best linebacker. That didn't make any sense. James Bradbury was the best DB. Best kicker, Elliot Fry. Elliot Fry's at 7. Maybe time to move on. Okay. I think that's everything we need to see. Bengals, Giants are in the Super Bowl. Nobody cares who wins that. I cannot believe the Bengals. Boy, Bengals and Giants, they, they got like two combined wins, maybe three combined wins so far. So, hey, what a difference two seasons can make. We got some upgrades to do here, though. We're going to go ahead and do that. Keelan Dent, good stuff there. Maybe show us Power Rusher. Show us Star. Possibly. That's a lot of traits that he got upgraded. He does have Star. Good stuff there. So he got that upgrade from normal to star solid. That was our first round pick. That was a solid pick. That last draft was a good draft as far as us drafting value at the positions that we were at. We just didn't get any development traits uh, minus you know the normal ones. So it's good to see that he gets that upgrade. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and let's go ahead and advance to the first start, the start of free agency here. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this right now just to make sure that the gameplay didn't decide to go fuzzy on me again. Okay, so we are at the start of free agency, and this is going to be the first season that we're going to actually be able to sign some free agents. We've got about 50 mil in cap room to spend, and we need to upgrade the offensive line. The offensive line prospects in this draft are not the greatest. I mean, there might be one, maybe two, but it doesn't even look like those prospects are going to be that good right now. So let's see what's here in free agency. Hopefully something's on the offensive line. Usually it's never the case, but let's just go ahead and take a look. So we've got 51.62 mil in cap room. That's really solid. We did re-sign some players. Nobody of note. We did not re-sign Caleb McGarry. So J.J. Watts here, Kareem Hunt, Von Miller, Rodney Hudson, who is 34 overall, 
as the best lineman out there right now. That's not someone I think that we want to bring in. Juan Thornhill at free safety. We're kind of set there. Marquise Pouncey at 34 overall. Jack Conklin is an 80. What, what am I doing here? 82 overall. <laughs> I was looking at his age, his number, and his overall, and I, I literally, my brain just didn't know what to do. He's an 82 overall right tackle. He's 29. We may look to bring him in just because, like I said, Andy Isabella, who won wide receiver of the year, is in free agency at an 80 overall. He's 26 years old. I thought that was DJ Moore. I was about to say, why is he down to a 79 overall? Kevin Zeitler. Okay, so it looks like it looks like we are going to extend an offer here to Jack Conklin. He is 29, so we're going to have a tackle that's 31 and another one that's 29. But I'm telling you, there's nothing really of value in this draft here and the fact that we actually have an a tackle that's here so he wants uh let's see let's make this offer and just see where we're at we'll see if we need to adjust it 92 total points we are eighth it's not very good we definitely need to adjust it we need to at least get to 98 points and i think my game captured might have just messed up again i saw that flash on the screen i hope it didn't we're gonna uh we're gonna pause it right here though just to make sure that it didn't okay so fortunately it didn't everything does look good if it messes up and I'm not able to show the free agents that I sign, I will obviously show them before we go into the draft. But uh, we're going to up the signing bonus. We've got some cap to work with here, so we can give him a little bit more than what he wants. We're going to up this here. This looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and offer him this. 101 total points. That should be first. That is first. Okay, good stuff. Anybody else here that we want to take a look at? Noah Fant at 25 star development, but we've got Dominic Darby who's progressing right now as our tight end. Devin Singletary. Devin Singletary. So our running back situation is a bit, well, it's not that great to be honest with you. Do we want to try to extend an offer to Rodney Hudson here? I mean, he's 34, 87 overall, probably not to be honest. Kareem Hunt, who's 28. All right, these guys are too old. Devin Singletary, do I want to extend an offer to him? I've got an 81 overall running back in Chubba Hubbard who is underperforming, but is still in his rookie contract. Juan Thornhill. Jonathan Jones. Casey Hayward is old. <laughs> Jonathan Abram, we don't need him. Tony Pollard, he's 26 at an 80. We don't need him. And just hold pat with that we'll back out here we'll sim one week into the second week we'll see where we we're at did we get jack conklin did we get noah fant let's hope we did uh we didn't get either one of them oh brother i guess we're going to extend an, an offer here to uh this 25 year old tackle greg little Just so we can have someone to start at right tackle if, if need be. Oh man, what a what a letdown. We gotta have a we gotta have a good draft. We got we've got to have a good draft. All right, so I want to scout these players. Um, I'm gonna do that, and I'll catch you guys once we start the draft. I'll let you know if we got Greg Little. Okay, so we were able to sign Greg Little. Thank goodness, we at least have someone to play right tackle. Because I tell you, let's come in here and let's just look at some of the available prospects. There's just nothing really on the O-line that we want. I mean, even this right tackle, Bobby Cooper, who's a first-round grade but a second-round talent. I mean, it really doesn't look like anything that's going to be more than normal development. Maybe a 72 to 73 overall player. I mean, I could be wrong on that, but there's just nothing else. This guy, A.J. Lindley, is probably the best offensive lineman that's, that's there. Um, you know, but even here, we're probably looking at a 74, 75 overall with normal development, I would guess. That's just my opinion. But these left tackles just do not look... I mean, this dude is projected in the first round. He's undrafted talent. It's just... I mean, you can't do anything with that, right? So, there are a lot of solid running backs that we could get in the later rounds from what it looks like that have first round grades. I mean, Kai Holloway has a first round talent, but he's projected in the sixth round. But just look at those top three A plus carrying, A minus stiff arm, A minus break tackle. He had a good combine as well. Um, I mean, 
we could definitely look to take a running back, but I'm almost considering trading this first round pick for a tackle that's already established in this league just so we can kind of shore up that offensive line. But we'll see what we want to do. Let's go ahead, though. We're going to advance, and we should be picking, I don't know, but I'd say maybe like 9 or 10 if I had to guess. Let's go ahead and start the draft. I get so scared I'm going to hit simulate draft right there. I'm just going to start simulating. So let's pause it here, and we have the seventh overall pick. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm not going to look to move up or anything like that. I'm just going to basically look and see where we're at once we get to our, our pick we're going to go ahead and advance and see, see what's on the board, see where we're at. Do we look to trade this pick, right? So let's go ahead. Let's make our selection. We're going to pick our player. Let's come to our draft board, and let's see what's available here from our draft board. So Steve Jennings looks like a pretty solid right in. This A.J. Lindley is still here. Kai Holloway is obviously still here. But, brother... Ricky Jackson, a Hall of Fame linebacker. <laughs> Missing his, his shoulders. That's what a glitch there. Um, all right, this Corn Brown looks like he's a pretty solid right end. Please stop throwing that up there. I, I get it. I can hold to reorder it. I get it. I, I don't. I don't need to see that every time. Jerome Phillips is a pretty solid player. See Justin McLaughlin, who's third round projected. He's a second round talent. I mean, I could take Steve Jennings here, but I really don't I don't necessarily need him with what we've got on defense. I would really like to take... I'd like to go offense here, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, I'm not I'm not going to take... Uh, I'm not going to take Johnny Colbert. I mean, I just... He's got decent skills, but I'm just... I, I'm going to... I'm, I'm going to cut it here. I'm going to see if I can trade this first round pick. Maybe trade back. Maybe acquire some more picks for later on. Okay, after what feels like an absolute eternity, we are acquiring Tampa Bay Buccaneers left tackle. He's a 78 overall Jackson Carmen. Dude's only 23 years old. He's only got normal development, but with him being so young, we can slide him over to the right tackle. Uh, we, we're still looking to draft offensive linemen because we have an aging left tackle in Jake Matthews, so we're most likely, you know, with... Our second pick, our third pick, we're still going to look to take possibly a tackle here, but we're giving up our seventh overall pick. Once again, there's just not a lot of value for what we need right now, so doing this I felt like make the mo made the most sense. We're giving up our fifth this year, and then we're giving up our fourth for next year, so I th feel like we got some good value for what we're getting in return here, or, or I feel like we're getting some good value for what we are giving up here. Okay, so the guy that to be honest with you, that I like the most out of everybody here is this Kai Holloway, but he's a sixth round projected first round talent, so I think we can wait around and get him a little bit later. I'm going to go Darren Taylor, cornerback here. While it's not like a huge need for us right now, we've got two corners in AJ Terrell and Kendall Sheffield that only have that only have normal development. They don't have that star development. We get Darren Taylor. Look at this dude. All right. His top three skills... B man coverage, B press, B minus play rec. Let's take a look though at the combine. Dude can fly. 4.3140. First in all cornerbacks. Second in the vert jump. Second in the 20 yard shuttle. Third in the bench press. So he's quick, strong, and he's shifty. We're going to go ahead and take Darren Taylor here. I think we're getting a steal here. We are. He is ranked number two in true value, and we took him at 39. He's only got that normal development. But we've seen so far that we've got some players that have had normal development and they've been able to get that development trade upgrade. This is the second ranked player in the class and we're getting him at 39. Super solid value here. I am very, very happy with this pick. Okay, so I really can't risk this guy slipping down any further. I think he... I think he may slip down a little bit further, but there's still some other value positions that we can take later on. I'm going to go ahead and take this running back, Kai Holloway. The guy did not have the best combine when it comes to where he stacks up as far as running backs go, uh, but this dude's more of a power back than anything, as you can see what his profile is. He's 6'1", 227. His top three, A-plus carrying, A-minus stiff arm, A-minus break tackle. He did have a 7.2 combine grade. Chubba Hubbard may not be the long-term answer. We're going to go ahead and take Kai Holloway. Tell me that I made a good pick here. I did. I did. 
He is 16th in true value. We took him at 71, and he does have hidden development, so it's going to be star or better. We're going to see if Chubba Hubbard's coming in with negative 2.375 yards per carry this season. You better believe I'm throwing Kai Holloway in. What's his rating so far? 87 speed, so he's not fast, but once again, this is more of a power back. 91 carrying, 82 ball carry aversion, 84 stiff arm, 83 change of direction, 90 excel is, is pretty solid too, So and 84 break tackle. Really looking to see the development of Kai Holloway. Okay, so we are still in the third round. This is the pick that we just picked up from Tampa Bay in the trade that we had at the beginning of the draft. I'm going to be taking Corey Baker here. He is a 6'5", 250-pound speed rusher out of LSU. Top three skills are pretty solid. He had a 6.9 combine grade. Super fast. I mean, ran the 40 and 4.6. That's first four ends. And decently solid. You know, not the strongest end, but, you know, decent combine. Pretty good combine. He's a late second round talent. He was projected in the early fifth round. We're taking him here in the third round. Did we make a good pick here? And we did. 55th in true value. We draft him at 86. He's only a 70 overall. But he's got that star better development. You really love to see that. He's not going to start right away, but we're going to see. Maybe we end up moving to a 3-4 later on down the road, and then we've got him can slide into that 3-4. 84 speed, 79 strength. Guy has 63 power moves, but he's got 77 finesse moves. So he's more of a speed rusher, as his profile says. Solid value right there. This has been a pretty good draft so far. I'm pretty happy with it. I tell you, we needed a solid draft to make up for that season that we had. Uh, very disappointing, to say the least. I got my eyes on, a guy, eyes on a guy up here, Raheem Barber. He is a right end, not really a position of need, but we are filling basically talent here right now. He had a good combine, pretty solid overall. Profiles as a speed rusher. Top three skills are pretty solid. He was projected as a mid-fifth rounder. His talent is late third. We're taking him in the fourth here. We're going to go ahead and draft him right now. Did we make a solid pick? We did for value. 84th in true value. We drafted him at 103. Normal development right now is a 68 overall. Going to be looking to take some snaps from Big Cat Bryant. <laughs> we'll see if he can get on the field from the Catster. I don't know if the Catster is going to let him, man. Andres Galarraga, he's coaching up his son pretty good. Big Cat, he's going to have a hard time getting on the field. But, hey, the value is there. A solid pick. Raheem Barber coming in as our fourth round pick and now we don't have another pick until the sixth round okay so it, it was not a good it was not a good draft for o-linemen uh there was a lot of solid running back prospects in this there's a lot of solid d-linemen i'm actually going to be taking another running back here this guy ray darius johnson 7.1 combine grade 30 reps on the bench press pretty decent top skills late seventh round projection but his talent says otherwise before we do that though let's take a look at richard Beatty here Probably goes, probably pronounced Beatty. Yeah. And then Jadarius Medlock. Yeah, we're going to go, I'm going to take Radarius Johnson here. Another running back. Once again, not really a position of need, uh, but we do get some value here. 60th in true value. We draft him at 167. He's got normal development. 69 overall. We'll see if he gets on the field. Probably not, but I mean, in the sixth round, you can't really ask for much more than that. Let's go ahead. We'll advance to our last pick. We're going to be picking seventh in the seventh round. And uh, we're just going to take, you know, another position of value that's on our board, most likely. Um, we don't need to skip ahead. We want to make our selection. I like this draft. We needed a solid draft to make up for the, the season, that's for sure. We got some hidden development in there. You, got it. you always love to see that. And um, rounding it out here, let's see who we want to take. Still some guys that are on our board. This guy right here, if we did switch over to a 3-4, would be pretty solid. These pretty much are the same player, as you can see. Uh, this guy had a better combine. 31 reps on the bench press. Can't argue with that. What are we looking like here? Yeah. We're going to go ahead and take Daniel Hyde. Not really a position of need right now, but could fill a hole later on. We did reach. Not by too much. 64 overall. He's got normal development. Not too bad in the seventh round. We have no picks remaining. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward now, and we are going to show you the team we are going to be going into year four season with where we're going to look to be taking home that Super Bowl as always and every single year.
Okay, so here is the team going into year four, starting at the quarterback position. We've got Justin Fields, who's up to a 79 overall. We need to see the kind of performance that we saw in the last quarter of last year's season going forward here if we're going to take that next step as an offense. That's really what let us down was this offense last year. In year four, we're going to need to pick that up, right? Chubba Hubbard, somehow he's still a superstar, right? He's at an 81 overall. We drafted Kai Holloway, though, and I've actually got Kai Holloway at the fullback position, so we're going to look to get him out on the field. He's also our power halfback, so he's going to be in on short yardage plays. We're going to look to get him in the lineup so we can see what his development trade upgrade is. You better believe if Chubba Hubbard slips and has some of the performances like he's had his first two years, Kai Holloway is going to get in the lineup. Our offense is not good enough for these players to have their position secure with the exception of Justin Fields and maybe our wide receiver core, right? Calvin Ridley, Russell Gage, Jalen Waddell, those are our three wide receivers, and Dominic Darby is our tight end. They were pretty solid. I think with Justin Fields' progression, as he continues to develop as a passer, you'll see Ridley, Gage, and Waddle have much better numbers, and they're obviously all still young, so they're going to continue to progress as well. Offensive line, we have upgraded. Now, we've got an aging left tackle in Jake Matthews, but we just couldn't replace him this offseason. There wasn't any real way around that, right? Now, we'll see. We'll look towards once we go into next year how we're performing. Maybe we want to package together some kind of draft picks for a better left tackle. We'll see how that goes. Really happy with Trey Smith and Chris, Chris Lindstrom, and I'm very happy to see what Jackson Carmen does. This is a young guy. He's only 23 years old, maybe 24. Young guy, right tackle. Immediate upgrade over 28 overall, 28 year old, 74 overall Caleb McGarry and Matt Hennessy. We definitely need to upgrade at center. Hopefully, he's going to play better than a 73 overall, but we definitely need to look to upgrade at that position. I wanted to do that in the draft, it just wasn't there for us this year. On the defensive side of the ball, look at what we've got. Joseph Osai is up to superstar. That is tremendous. I'm really expecting a lot from Darren Taylor here. I'm going ahead and starting him. He's only no, uh, normal development. He's 77 overall right now, but we are starting him over A.J. Terrell and Kendall Sheffield. A.J. Terrell is still going to play. Kendall Sheffield's not going to see too much playing time, although I do have Kendall Sheffield actually as our backup free safety. Um, Paris Ford and Keanu Neal are still holding down the safety positions, but check out our linebacking core. We've got superstar development at every single one now. Foye Aluakon, Deion Jones, Michael Walker. This defense was eighth in the league last year, not only in yardage allowed, but points allowed as well. If these defense can play the way it did last year and we get that offense rolling this year, I know a playoff berth is in store for us and we could potentially find ourselves in the Super Bowl. Keelan Dent, he's at star development. We already knew that. Marlon Davidson, he's a serviceable backup defensive tackle. Maybe that's something that we look to address in the offseason but right now that's gonna work this defense looks really good man I'm super happy with it special teams I completely omit this every single time maybe we look in free agency to upgrade the kicker but Sam Sloman is our kicker right now Sterling Hoffrichter he's a fine enough punter he's gonna stay there and he's also gonna kick off as well Here's our specialist. Our slot cornerback is going to be Darren Taylor. Keelan Dent, Grady Jarrett, Grady Jarrett, almost combined Grady Jarrett, Marlon Davidson's name. Grady Jarrett, Marlon Davidson, and Joseph Osai are going to be on the field when we are rushing the passer. Deion Jones at sub linebacker. Here's our power halfback, our third down running back. Russell Gage is going to be our slot wide receiver. Guys, I hope you did enjoy the video. I apologize that we went 6-10. and 10. I'd have loved to have brought another playoff season. And I'd love to bring home a Super Bowl. And that's what we're going to do in the next episode. Episode number four, year number four. We're going to look to take that next step. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, leave a like rating. If you've got a comment, anything that you feel like you know we should be doing or we should have done. Or if you just want to say what's up, man. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. I love interacting with you down there. I love that this series has brought in some Falcons fans, man. It's tough being a Falcons fan. I've been a Falcons fan for the better part of my life. Probably, I'd say, 15, if not more years. And uh, it has its ups and downs. It really does. But I have so much fun doing this series. And I've really had a lot of fun interacting with you guys. So leave me a comment in the comment section down below, man. I love talking to you down there. 
And if you do enjoy the content and you'd like to see more, man, hit the subscribe button and turn that notification bell on to stay updated with all of my uploads. I'm Jay Slay. I'm signing out today. I'll catch you all on my next video.